بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبتي في الله I was asked about advice for the one whose parents uh, dislike da'wah to Salafiyya. And for many of us, the cases or the situation is for those of us who came to Islam, converted to Islam, that most of us are parents or our parents are non-Muslim. Maybe they're Christian, they're Jew, Buddhist. Uh, Hindu, uh, etc. And our struggle is a bit different from some of our brothers and sisters who have Muslim parents, but however their Muslim parents are on a different methodology for understanding Islam than we are. And when striving to adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to remember that is first and foremost. And that supersedes all ties. And it supersedes everything because that's that's our strongest bond. Our strongest bond as Muslims is our adherence to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Dalil for this is that Allah Azza wa Jal fi Kitabih al Kareem says, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا uh, Hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And the hablillah, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the Qur'an. And the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as some of the mufassireen say, is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or it is Islam in general, kitab wa sunnah. And the methodology of the salaf of this ummah. And with that being the case, then that means that our unity is based upon the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding, it's muqayyid, it's with the understanding of following the salaf of this ummah because there's many groups that say Quran and sunnah, the Diobandi say this, the Naqshbandi say this, the various Sufi Turq, they say this, the uh, even the contemporary groups like Akhwan al Muslimin, Jamaat al Takfir wa Hijra, ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, whoever you want to call them, all these groups have the same claims. But Al Ibra bi Haqaiq, Lisa bi Musamiyat, that the proof or the reality of something is in its name, is in its substance, not in its name. So although everyone claims to be from Ahl Sunnah, it reverts back to their Ittaqad, their creed. And it goes back to their methodology for understanding Islam in the text of the Book of the Sunnah. And is their methodology the same methodology that the head of the Salaf al Salih traversed, which is the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiallahu Ta'ala Majmaheen, and which is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, If Tarakatil Yahuda la Etta was a bain firka, with Tarakatin Nasara la Thinatain was a bain firka, was a Tafariku had the Umma la Thalata was a bain firka, Kullaha finnar, Ilawahida Kulla men here Yarasullah, Kalaman can Allah Mithu, Makan Ali was Habi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The Jews break into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my Umma 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon I'm, what I'm upon and my Sahaba. So that's us know we have to find, we have to follow the methodology, the madhab of the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, khayr al-nas qarni thumma ladhina yalunuhum thumma ladhina yalunuhum. The best of the people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِي سُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَى رَاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِيِينَ And it's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُمْ مَجْمَعِينَ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْكَافِرُونَ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْأَهْلِ الشِّرْكُ وَزَنْدَقَ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ وَلَوْ كَرِيَ الْأَهْلَ بِدْعَ Adhering to the book and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the method of the Salaf is first and foremost. 
that does not negate obedience and love and respect and mercy and kindness and gentleness with one's parents, which is an, a, 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 a very important right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them over you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ And your Lord has uh, decreed, or He's ordered you, or He's commanded you, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ That you should not worship anyone except Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And to your parents be righteous or Give them, you know, all the things that come up with ihsan, mercy, gentleness, kindness, obedience, and good works, and love and respect. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, was asked, Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam, Ayya a'mal uhibbil Allah azza wa jal. Qala salat ala waqtiha. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, and I think it was a hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud that he said, uh, you know, which deed is best? He wanted to know. because this And this shows the fiqh of the Sahaba, that they wanted ilm. And what did they want? They wanted ilm and nafiyah. And what is ilm and nafiyah? Ilm and nafiyah is that which is going to bring you closer to Allah. That's the, the most important knowledge, is knowledge that's going to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people are going to bring you closer to Allah azza wa jal. So, he asked, he said, which deed is best? The Prophet sallallahu said, salat ala waqtiha. He said, prayer at its time. So, bi harus. You know, be stern and vigilant and praying at its time. Then he said, Thumma ay, and then what? Then the, the second thing the Prophet ﷺ said from the best deeds after the prayer, he said, uh, 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 obedience to the parents, piety, humility, righteousness to one's parents, bitter waladain. Then he said, Thumma ay, then what? Then he said jihad fi sabilillah. So biru al takes precedence over jihad, fi, jihad fi sabilillah. Showing us the pinnacle of Islam, that, that's that prayer. Salat, that's, your, that's your, 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 your means of communicating to your Lord and asking and begging his forgiveness and seeking his favor. And... After maintaining that tie with your Lord, which is actually a part of Tawheed al-Ibadah, because you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, is bitter waladain, is being pious and righteous towards one's parents. So we know that immense duty to be respectful and righteous towards our parents. And that is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnah of Islam. With that being the case, what if there is some conflict between those duties of adhering to the sunnah and being obedient to one's parents, which is azim? The Prophet ﷺ said, لا طاعة في مخلوقات في معصية الله There is no obedience to the creation in disobedience to the creator. Creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khaliq He created everything. And He is the haq Allah al and ya'budu wa la yushriku bi shayin. And the right of Allah, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala when they were riding the donkey, he said the right of Allah is that you worship Him and him alone and do not associate any partners with Him. So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's haq. And that comes before everything. So with that being the case, if they deter you from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it's upon you to be wise and have hikmah. That doesn't mean you disrespect your parents. doesn't mean you curse your parents. doesn't mean you harm your parents. doesn't mean you run and flee from your parents. But you first and foremost, you maintain the respect and the kindness and obedience, but not to bid'ah. If they call you to disobedience to Allah, 
as is the case with the Muslim ruler, فَلَا سَمْعَ وَلَا طَاعَ There's no hearing and there's no obeying in that. So for example, if they are, for example, Naqshbandi, and they say, you cannot sit with Salafi scholars, and you must sit in our Mudaris Naqshbandi, in our, in our, uh, our, our Naqshbandi schools, and you must learn this methodology and this madhab, and you must practice these ways of coming closer to Allah from all the deviant practice of the Naqshbandis, for example then that is not permissible for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, you must be wise and have hikmah when dealing with them, dealing with them and dealing with that issue. So therefore, if they prohibit you from the da'wah to Ahl sunnah that doesn't prohibit you from in your time when you can to read the books, read the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bukhari and Muslim, Muslim and the explanations of the ulama, you know, I'm sure your parents aren't over you 24-7. They're not over you all the time. So do your best. That is where you take your sources of knowledge. Khalas. You can't compromise that. However, it doesn't mean you have to flaunt it in front of your parents. It doesn't mean you have to call yourself Salafi in front of your parents. It doesn't mean you have to do anything which is going to cause harm between you and them. But just if you have the ability, if you have some knowledge, you are not encouraged to debate with your parents. But if you can correct them with dalil from the book and the sunnah, because that's the da'wah of Ahl sunnah. That's the Salafi minhaj, is the book and the sunnah. So if you can correct them with dalil, then they will only make, uh, they will only show their own lack of concern for the book of the sunnah by rejecting that. If you said, if, if they say, no, you must turn out the lights and say, Allahu, 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 100 times or 1,000 times or until slobber comes out of your mouth, whatever the case may be, okay? They, and they say that you must do this, you must, you know, make to offer on the graves or, you know, whatever the case may be, whether it's light to sow off or whether it's extreme to sow off. But you are able to say, well, no, call Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, fi kitab al kareem Allah said in the Quran, if you can present some evidence to show the, that, and you'll find that in the Salafi books, then you'll be able to correct them with kindness and respect, and you'll be maintaining the Amr bi Maruf and Nahina Munkar, you'll be commanding the good and forbidding the evil to the best of your ability, but without debate and without discord. So then they will have to accept that. And this has been tried and tested. Uh, many of the, uh, Some of the students of knowledge and scholars even who went back to the locality, especially it's, I'm reminded of a story I've heard on more than one occasion from a scholar who was teaching the books of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, like a, a Kitab al-Tawheed. Or he brought it to a sheikh who used to curse and make dua against Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, I believe it was in Afghanistan. And... He tore the, the cover off, and he said, Sheikh, one day he said, Sheikh, what do you think about this book? I, I just wanted your opinion. You know, I, I need some, uh, some help and assistance with this. And it was Kitab al-Tawheed with, with the cover off, you know, without Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab's name and so forth. And he said, is this Bukhari? You know, because, it, because the way it's structured, a lot of Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab's books, he wrote them with ayat and hadith and aqwal as-salaf. And then he might have some other principles. And it depends on the book, but especially Kitab al-Tawheed, Usul al and books like this, you know, very strong with Adilla and even Nawaqid al-Islam and so forth. So then he thought that this was Bukhari Muslim and then later he, he told him, no, this is the one you used to curse on the minbar. And this is a true narration narrated to us from one of our sh scholars and I've heard this on more than one occasion even Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr Hafizullah Ta'ala mentioned it and I heard it from Sheikh um, Sheikh uh, Abu Salah Al Afghani Afghani scholar who lives in Kuwait Hafizullah Ta'ala and the point being Abid Tafila is having hikmah in the da'wah and, and, and in presenting to that when people are resistant so it's upon you to follow the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah and traverse that path and do your best to be kind and gentle and respectful at the same time. It does not have to be as hard as you think it is. And I know it's not easy at the same time. And everyone's situation is different. Some people have very stern parents who hate Salafia. 
So this is all I can offer of advice, and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and make the affairs easy of all of our brothers and sisters in Islam, regardless of whether they're in Syria, being bombed and chemical weapons used on them from the most deviant of the creation from amongst the devils. And whether it be our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan who are suffering and don't have stability in their country because of the Taliban and other deviant groups who continue to bomb them in their marketplace, or whether it be the Muslims who are suffering under Boko Haram and, and all of the people who suffer under these deviant takfiri groups and other deviant groups. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our affairs easy. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.